Hi all, I'm really glad to have today with me the co-founders of Aura Energy, Ranjita Ravi and Prajwal Sabnis on the chat today. Uh, we've all heard about their upcoming electric sports motorcycle, the Mantis, and it is targeted for a commercial launch next year. So we'll speak to Ranjita and Prajwal and know more about their plans. Thank you guys for making time for this. Yeah, thanks, Priyachi. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah, always a pleasure. So uh, first of all, I'm curious to know more about your professional journey so far. Like how did both of you venture into electric vehicle and energy systems? Prajwal, you want to take that first? <laughs> <laughs> no, so uh, it's pretty straightforward. We were working uh, in Bangalore. Uh, so daily commute is there. You, uh, you feel a lot about the pollution that's around. You feel a lot about you know, you hear a lot about TVs, but at that point, when we started, we didn't find anything that we would like to ride. Hmm. Uh, Aether, etc. were not on the scooter and you would never, personally, you would never see me on a scooter. Uh, the only bike we found was something on, uh, you know, zero motorcycles, like in the US times, very expensive. So we decided to just start off on our own because we didn't find anything that we would like to ride here. So... And that led from one thing to the other. So when we started doing the prototypes, early prototyping testing, the we found that you know not too many good uh, batteries are available. The performance requirements are not being met. They are too expensive, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's how we ended up, uh, you know, sort of engineering our own solutions from the energy storage space as well. Yeah. So and where Prajwal comes from, the whole uh, technology and engineering and that kind of a side. Uh, for me, my folk motivation or drive for this is more towards the sustainability side. It comes more from the sustainability side. Uh, and I mean, and the common thread between all of us is that we're all bikers. So mm -hmm. we're trying to build a bike that we would want to ride, right? Um, so that's, that's kind of the, the common thing that brings everybody together. It's a recruitment question. You have to be a bike, biker to join uh, at Orha. So um, that's kind of how it started. So we were bikers. We wanted to ride a bike. Uh, we wanted to build a bike that we wanted to ride. Um, and my focus is always about um, the sustainability. So although we had had a journey, say, in, outside of India, in Europe, Tajur was in Germany for, and then in Paris, and I was also in Paris, and I traveled to 30 plus countries. And um, that kind of drove a lot of my focus towards sustainability. Um, and not just, just because it's an EV, it's not sustainable alone mm -hmm. with that the way the vehicle is engineered, the materials that are used in it, and what happens to all of the components in the materials after you're done uh, using it on a Mantis. So we consider all of that uh, when we build the vehicle itself. And that's built in from the, from the design stage. So um, that's, that's my, my motivation <laughs> for, for starting Orha and, and building a Mantis. Right, right. So uh, though the vehicle development, design, validation, it's a long process and there uh, ideally should not be any shortcuts. And it's good if you know you are taking time with the vehicle uh, before it actually comes on the road. But what's mm -hmm. more interesting is simultaneously you built another B2B business that's already generating revenue. So mm -hmm. can you tell us, uh, we hear about Mantis a lot. It's, it's, yes. in, uh, it's more visible, but we don't hear about your, the B2B side of your uh, business. So can you tell more about it? What is it and how, what are you working on? We can share briefly about it. Um, by the nature of the business, a lot of work that we do on the B2B side can't really be shared. Mm -hmm. um, the focus, if I have to uh, summarize it very quickly, it is where our performance engineering so we focus on performance systems whether it's energy systems storage control systems even electric vehicles is on the performance side and there are certain markets there are certain types of customers for whom this performance uh, high performance level or high power level is very very crucial and that's what drives their business model right uh, so our engineering expertise that we have built while building the Mantis is very useful for them. And that's where we contribute to their production, their development, et cetera. So a um, few examples of um, types of clients would be, say, our um, UAV and drone customers. Mm -hmm. So since the Mantis is very powerful, right, the motor on the Mantis is a 28 kilowatt uh, motor. 
and drones by their nature tend to be very high power they mm. use up they need batteries that can provide say at like 4c 10c kind of performance right so we are capable we have built a capability in building uh, battery packs and the control systems for such requirements and we have a specialization in heavy systems so drones that are say 50 60 kg mm -hmm. other side we also work a lot with some defense customers mm -hmm. so people who work on defense systems either say on control systems vehicle. um vehicles entire vehicles also we build uh, but I, I we i can i can tell you this much about that but this is what i would say is that the intersection of our performance engineering and the fact that we're able to build uh, electric vehicles and battery systems and control systems that can handle a lot of power mm -hmm. um, uh, can deliver a lot of power without you know damage to anything uh, vehicle or the battery or things like that that is the kind of customers who who come to us okay and you have uh, intellectual property uh, to your name uh, with respect to those systems? Absolutely. Understood. Yes. Understood. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you, we read about the Bharat Mala ride you did earlier this year with Mentis. So that's again very interesting. So if you could talk about what was um, uh, what, what were you what was the objective of doing that? Was it to test your own bikes or mm -hmm. was it to build the awareness and the confidence in people that electric can actually go anywhere and it can perform in any condition? So uh, tell us about uh, the journey you you did and uh, what were your experience like? What were your learnings like? Okay, so we'll split this between Prajwal and me. Um, the origins of it, I will just give a very quick brief. And uh, the actual ride and what happened during the ride, Prajwal is a better person to answer because he actually rode about 4,000 uh, of the 14,000 kilometers. So the objective was, it was a, it was a group of us. Um, so it was called Startup and Ref. That was the team that we built with multiple startups and other people. Um, some people's focus was road safety, um, so like what for Raja, some people's focus was more um, on building startups, encouraging students to build startups in um, rural tier two, tier three cities of India. So this would be the mentors from Brigadery, right? And for Raf, it was more about doing this extensive ride on our vehicle that we have built before we even give it out to the public, mm -hmm. right? To do our own internal validation in such a spectacular way, mm -hmm. uh, right? And the point is all of the startups that were part of the consortium uh, were made in India startups. We were completely made, all of us were made in India startups. So this was an even bigger motivation um, for say students who might think that, okay, maybe if they think they can't do it or, you know, that in life is, it's very hard to start up. They would have a look at us and see what we're doing. And all of these are made in India startups. So this was the general motivation um, for doing the ride itself. And the ride was, of course, to prove a point mm -hmm. uh, that India is EV ready. Right? We did 13,510 kilometers in 54 days around the perimeter of India, mm -hmm. whether it was the coastal regions, whether it was highways, cities, extreme terrains, rain, slush, desert, <laughs> all of it, uh, mountains, both in the Northeast and in the Himalayas in up North in Kashmir or in the Western Ghats in Maharashtra and Karnataka. And I'm going to give that part to Prajwal because he was the one who was covered in slush in 120 kilometers of rain in the Northeast. Yeah. So uh, I think the ride was pretty interesting, obviously a uh, challenging ride as well, because as is with any of uh, these kinds of rides, things almost never go to plan. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the day you start off, the plans are out the window. Uh, it started with us, interesting anecdote, like the service guy with whom we, the mechanic we had been training for this ride for a month and a half had to pull out at like 9.30 uh, p.m. the night before we just left. Okay. Uh, so things like that. Um, because of a family emergency, not for it. Yeah. So, but by and large, a very, very interesting ride, a very positive ride for us. Uh, what we discovered, uh, very big takeaways for us 
people across the country are very excited about evs it's not like ki market nahi hai people don't know people need to be educated no that's not at all true uh, even in tier 2 tier 3 cities that you go to uh, you would actually see a lot of excitement about evs a lot of knowledge about evs uh, there i mean we we've, we've had some of the most interesting discussions we've had in small cities uh, if you actually followed the right we avoided all the big cities because we know big cities people are already aware of many things right because of the exposure they get but this was really surprising for us because tier 2 tier 3 cities were absolutely fantastic to talk to uh, so people in general are very aware about evs uh, the second biggest learning we had is that the expectation of a ev is very different from region to region so if you speak to uh, say bikers in uh northeast india say gauhati their expectations of what the vehicle must do is very different from say uh orissa or bengal or say even uh uh, okay. uh gurgaon area where the terrain was somewhat flat and most people are happy with the low performance systems versus let's say you come down to pune or to bangalore where you have a lot of you know uh, hills plateaus etc or say even mangalore uh with, which are in the ghat sections so the expectations vary a lot from region to region uh so that was one so it's it's very clear that you know this one type of ev will meet everyone's requirements that is not at all true uh, so that kind of got reinforced uh the third most important thing which was one of the most challenging points for us from the right perspective uh which actually uh, led us to changing a lot of our original plans was the charging bit um it's a mixed bag right now it's not like there is no charging infrastructure as long as you have a house with a heating line available you can charge any ev that is a good part of it right and now though you have all these uh, standards that are coming up ac001 and all those so pretty much most of the country is ready at least for home charging let's put it that way mm-hmm. uh, but one of the small uh, i'd say not small but one of the big hiccups that we faced it, i mean it's not obstacle but it's a, still a hiccup right uh is that the power quality is not uniform across the country mm-hmm. what that means is that uh grid you know level. at a grid level some of in many of tier 2 tier 3 cities you have large fluctuations which cause damage to say your chargers or charging infrastructure or in some places the connectivity is not there so uh, a lot of our partners are coming up with these iot established smart charging meters to enable public charging but if the network connectivity there goes bad or for whatever reason right so you could have a power failure at the uh, at the you know mobile uh, tower. at the mobile tower or or there's cloud cover etc so these kinds of things uh, play a small but you know still significant role in uh, causing some inconvenience in terms of charging mm-hmm. and at least as far as the ride was concerned because the time was kind of fixed because we had a very fixed time frame we had to start on this date and end on this date uh we had to change a lot of plans but it's still very promising right because it's not like the charge uh, the biggest complaint we hear we hear is there is no charging infrastructure so no one will adopt evs but in in our experience of having covered the length and breadth of india that's not at all true and just for numbers right we went with two motorcycles yeah. and four sets of batteries each so we were charging on a daily basis pretty okay, much TV. 80 units of electricity because every day because we were on a tight schedule the team was covering between 350 to 450 kilometers every day and on the longest days they were doing 470 kilometers so that's 80 units of electricity that the team managed to find and put into the battery packs every night hmm right uh, so we cannot say it's not justified to say that india has no charging infrastructure you have a house or a hotel with a plug point charging infrastructure is there in a way in a way right? so at least home charging or this kind of charging can happen the other points is is what prajal mentioned but just for the size of it huh? we were doing 400 km every day 80 units of of charge every day for the two motorcycles together yeah okay so you would uh, uh, carry swappable batteries or uh, uh, yes so the Charging the mantis up. yeah the mantis is um going to be swap ready this version of the mantis that we launch next year 
for the customers will not have swap. It will have home charging or fast charging, right? Once the core room is there, we will have swap as well. Uh, for this ride, we had a train mechanic. So we partnered with Spirit, which is another made in India startup, right? Uh, we partnered with Spirit. We had, and they are focusing on specializing in EVs, right? Mm -hmm. So they had one of their um, team leads who came with us uh, for the entire ride. And he was specialized, he was trained in managing how to change the battery packs and swap the battery packs for the purpose of this ride. Yeah. But the, ride, the Mantis that will launch next year will not have a uh, swap. It will have fast charging and home charging. Okay. So uh, what is the current focus at Aura? What are you guys working on right now? <laughs> to get the Mantis out. Yes. Very simple. The entire team is working only on one thing, uh, okay. which to get the Mantis out into the hands of the people. So we are focusing a lot on manufacturing readiness. We're focusing on our new facility. Um, the getting all the certifications in place and getting uh, the Mantis ready to be built and out okay. of our factory. And what is the time frame you are currently targeting? For that? As, soon as, as soon as possible, actually. So it's a little, it's a little fluid right now because, like you know, this whole uh, the component shortage and other things are just easing up slowly. Uh, it is easing up, so it was not, it's not as bad as it was last year. Uh, it's a little fluid, so I think when we're closer to launch, uh, we will announce more firm dates. Uh, we just want to see how this, all of these other global issues ease up in the next couple of months. But from we do a lot of our tech in-house. Yeah. So mm -hmm. like the Mantis has equivalent of say like four computers on board. And we do all of those boards and all of the embedded tech in-house. Uh, so, and not just the batteries, the BMS, the thermal management, the vehicle control unit, um, the human machine interface, the app for it, everything is done uh, in-house by our team. So we're just waiting for these things to maybe ease up a little bit and we'd be able to give a more firm date once our supply is also stabilized. Yeah. Okay. And uh, can you also talk about your recent uh, uh, collaboration announcement with the SAR group? Uh, what mm -hmm. are the plans there? Uh, are you looking to leverage their manufacturing competencies to bring out Mantis soon? Uh, if you can elaborate on that. So I think, um... So of course we will be working with them. Uh, the thing is that right now we are focusing on an integrated R&D and manufacturing unit. That's the new unit that's coming up. Uh, it's coming up just outside of Bangalore. Mm -hmm. uh, that unit will be more focused towards how we do things at our heart right? because we have this focus on performance systems, tech development, and a certain kind of production. When we work with SAR, uh, it's important to understand that we bring two different uh, aspect. So the Arha team brings the engineering aspect of it. We are good at quick engineering, uh, quick product development because we've done a whole bunch of things, uh, paying attention to focus, etc. So that's what we bring. And obviously, SAR has a lot of uh, you know expertise in distribution, sales, manufacturing. And uh, they have manufacturing at scale, yeah. right? They are they've been doing it for thirty five years. Yeah. So they have a whole bunch of uh, expertise that comes from deploying uh, their businesses at scale. So this comes to a very interesting uh, mix of uh, let's say competencies, and we are working on a few things with them, yeah. but I think uh, we will have to wait for a, a bit for, to see what announcements come out of it. Mm -hmm. But I think the only thing we can safely say at this point are there are definitely uh, many things that we are working on together. 